I'll, I'll continue to take them. Um, I put no series, but um, I think I'm going to name this the new year. All right, I think it's because I see a trend as I study for these messages and how scripture is just pointing it that this is uh, messages for a new hope in the new year. Um, well, continued hope in the new year. And thank you to the live stream for joining with us today. If you've got any questions or comments, just leave them below. We'll get back with you soon. Um, I'm happy to have you. Now, today this is going to be the third message that has to do with the new year. Last week, we I think um, we had a very fruitful sermon. We talked about condition. We talked about position. We talked about state. We talked about standing. And today I want to elaborate on that a little bit more and add a new word. Not a new word, but a new word to the series. We got position, we got condition, and today we're going to talk about our direction, specifically as the body of Christ and as individuals. Um, I'll start off quick geography lesson. Okay? Today we're going to be talking about always moving north. But before I can talk about this, I need to make aware that there is um, some confusion on really what is north. Now, I've drawn two maps of the world, and I've even marked off where I think we should be, all right, North Carolina. Now, one of the things that we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about finding what is true north, all right, where our direction as Christians should be heading to. Now. The problem that, especially in geography that, and uh, following compasses and things like that, is a lot of times in life, whenever we say we are looking north, we are trying to find the right directions, a lot of times we're not actually looking at what is really north. We're looking at something called geographic north. Now geographic north is a little bit different from what is truly north. The geographic north is actually pointing, when you look at a compass, it is pointing to the North Pole. The North Pole is not where you think Santa's workshop would be. It's actually a lot lower as the Earth is on a rotation and it has a tilt. A lot of times this is subject to change. As the world spins, the North Pole, Santa's workshop, actually changes depending on where you are in the year. So it may be over here one day, and it may be over here the next, uh, in another part of the year. But there's something called true north. When we're looking at geographic north, it moves in curved lines. It's not always straight up. It's not always a direct path. But with true north, it doesn't change. True north is sitting at the top of the world, in the center of the earth. That is where north is. From North Carolina, to here it would be a straight path and um, it would be unchanging much like our standing in Jesus Christ is it is unchanging that is our position we are positioned in Christ Amen. now there are many different GPS's in our world and they're constantly changing as the world around us changes as the flesh pulls uh, people one way and so forth. It's always changing. But we we can have a hope. We can have somewhere where we can always look to and always continue to appeal. And that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As a Christian, let's talk uh, just quickly about what this true north looks like in our life. I call it our direction. Okay. So last week we talked a little bit about these two words, standing and state. This, I guess this is the sequel to that sermon. Now, we talked about how last week we have a standing, and in our standing, it is unchanging. This is our position in Jesus Christ. Then we talked about state. Now, state may fluctuate. I guess some people could call this the faith, all right, or your faith. But what our state should look like should look a lot like our standing. As our state and our standing, well, if our state looks a lot like our standing, we know we're in the right place. Position in Jesus Christ, following what He would have us to do, particularly by the, the message that was given to the Gentiles. There, this would be known as our true north. It's when our standing and our state look identical. When we uh, represent Jesus Christ as He would have us according to His Word. 
living a sanctified life within the will of God is our true north. It is our true direction. There's a verse that I always look to when I'm, um, when I'm talking and speaking on direction. Let's go to Proverbs 3, 5-6. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. <clears throat> so, in these verses, um, King Solomon, considered the wisest man who had ever lived, had talked about um, finding true understanding. And across dispensations, I think that this uh, verse still rings true. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Particularly, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we invest our trust and best belief in what he had done and accomplished. And lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And all the verses around the scripture is um, very good too. True north, our direction as Christians, where we look to, requires a celestial understanding. It requires the knowledge of the Almighty God as delivered, particularly through His Word and interpreted through His Spirit. Uh, the only problem with this is it requires us not to lean into our own understanding, which we as Christians are, or we as people, as human beings, are often uh, apt to do. We like to lean into our understanding. We like to think we are right. We like to do what feels good in the moment, but we as Christians, we are looking up towards a heavenly inheritance, not an earthly inheritance. So not leaning into our understanding is how we get the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Understanding what He would have us to know. As a church, I pray we understand the gospel as it has been given to us in this day and age. That Jesus Christ came, He died, He was buried, and as we talked about in our morning study, he rose again. I think it was Acts 13, 13.30. It says, But God raised Jesus from the dead. This is our hope. Uh, this is what get, allows us to have the hope for the future. Our blessed hope that he is coming back again to take us up with him. Now, knowing um, that by this gospel, we are positioned in Jesus Christ. We are established. Our true north our direction needs to be firm. It doesn't need to be wavering. It doesn't need to be moving with the world around us. It needs to be moving in line with our standing, with what God would have us to do. We are moving towards our heavenly inheritance, not with the, uh, not inheriting something of the world. Let's turn to Second Th uh, Thessalonians two fifteen, if you would. Second Thessalonians two fifteen. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about looking north and traveling. Second Thessalonians two fifteen. Now, what directs us as Christians, as members of the body of Christ? I always hold it up and appeal to it. The Holy Word. 2.15, 2 Thessalonians 2.15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Our epistle. This is talking about the message that uh, the Apostle Paul had to the Gentiles in, 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 this, um, in this dispensation. Turn over to Galatians 5.1. I think it's best that we let Scripture interpret Scriptures. What does it mean to stand fast? To hold firm. Let's look at a few examples of it. Galatians 5. For one thing, we stand fast in Scripture. When we stand fast in Scripture, we're also standing fast in the liberty that Jesus Christ gave us. The freedom. Galatians 5.1. Stand fast, therefore... And the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Let me read that again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ 
has made us free. Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Our directions as Christians, following the will of God, and we'll talk about that uh, more so here soon, it is, our direction is by Scripture. Our direction has liberty. We have freedom as Christians by the grace of God. Let's move on. Philippians 1.27 When I'm reading scripture and I see those two words, stand fast, believe me, there is good news following. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1.27. Honestly, we can go back. Let's start. Let's start at 24. Nevertheless, this is Paul speaking. It says, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So Paul's saying it is needful that I'm here, that I'm giving what Jesus, the message that Jesus has uh, given me to give you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for the furtherance of joy and of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, and that ye stand fast in one spirit. There is unity. Our direction as the body of Christ has unity in the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day. With one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Our direction is led by scripture. We have freedom. We are united in fellowship by one spirit and one mind, the same mind that is in Jesus Christ. Our true north is operating in the will of God and requires firmness in the faith. I put it here in my notes. I said, read, pray, act, repeat. Read, pray, <laughs> act, repeat. I don't know what I was thinking. Apparently, I had to, I had to, I had to write that down as I was reading this. <laughs> Pull it all together. But... Here's the deal. Even a straight path, our direction as we pursue the will of God in our lives while we are still present on this earth. As Paul did, Paul said it was needful that I'm here for you. He was following in the will of God. He had purpose. He had direction. The end goal of his direction was to see Jesus Christ once more. And I'm, I'm excited to see him in heaven as well. But as, he moves for, as we move forth, even in a straight line, that doesn't mean that we don't have stops. Where's my marker? Having stops does not mean that we get off track. Having stops means that we are human beings and we face adversity in this life. Hopefully, let's, uh, I'm going to draw a line here in the middle. Focus on this line. We have a standing that is unmoving. That is the point where we are it is unmoving. But as we live our life and we are following the direction of Jesus Christ, sometimes you have these, I call them those sub points. In math, you may have seen this in your class this year, Sylvia. Have y'all talked about rays? Maybe. That is when. 44, come on. What? That's when you have stops along the way on an arrow. Call this adversity. It doesn't mean that you're off track as you're following in direction. You have stops. Life is full of rays. They are adversity, and adversity builds Christian characters as you're following in the will of God. Matter of fact, I call, uh, uh, like I said, I call these adversity, and I got this idea, this sermon topic, actually from a secular book. I know as a pastor I probably shouldn't admit that. But I got this topic idea from a man named Joe DeSano. He was a, he founded the Spartan race and he founded something called the Death Race. It's basically this big um, sporting event where people will go through these tumultuous events to try to get to the end and be crowned champion. And he, he said in this book, and I thought it was very interesting, he says no matter what path you're on, you face two types of adversity. You face natural adversity, that's whatever life has to throw at you, that's unexpected. And then you have something called manufactured adversity. That's 
whatever essentially that we cause in our life uh, that we can still grow through. An example of this is sporting events. I went to a wrestling match yesterday and I saw a lot of guys try their hardest and they went through constant um, adversity in their matches. And because of that, hopefully their character grew. It's called that manufactured adversity. These stops, as we are following the will of God, these hard times, um, as we're following the will of God, they have a fascinating effect that scripture talks about time and time again. They grow us. They give us patience. They give us diligence. They give us persistence as we uh, pursue the blessed hope of Jesus Christ. They grow us, particularly when we reject our own understanding of things. When we're going through life and things don't make sense, and we want to just work it out however that looks like, and if we step away from the scripture and what scripture will have us, that's going to have a negative effect. But if we appeal to Christ, we pray, we continue in the scripture as he has laid it out to us, you will grow in patience, hope, and Christian character. And your state will look a whole lot like your understanding. And seeking the scriptural worldview that Christ will work all things to the good of those who love him and call to forth to his purpose. Let's turn to Romans 5, 1 through 5, if you will. <clears throat> Romans 5, 1 through 5. These, as we're following the will of God, this is a scripture I believe is talking about the adversity that we will face. Uh, face. As in scripture, I believe it's 2 Timothy 3, 12 through 13, it says, All in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Let's look at what that persecution, let's look at what that adversity actually does for us. Therefore, I can go back and talk about all the wonderful things he's talking about there. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. By whom also we have access by faith into the grace of God where in ye, it, wherein we stand, standing unchanging. We stand in Je uh, Christ Jesus and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Now, that verse always gets me. No matter how much I look at it, how do we glory in the tribulations that we have in life? I'll keep reading. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Whenever there are hard times in life that challenge our faith, that require us to go back to Scripture and see what uh, Christ Jesus has said about this, there is benefit to it, whether we see it or not. Sometimes that benefit is just patience. Sometimes, uh, and once we have patience, we get experience and patience. Yes, patience is something that requires experience. And experience is something that requires patience. Sorry. And experience, hope. When we talk about hope, sometimes it's hard to have hope. But when we are patient and we experience the goodness of God time and time and time again, we actually have, um, we have persistence in hope. We can see that Christ has gotten through this once, he'll get me through it again. We can see that no matter what we're going through, Jesus Christ still died, he still is buried, he still rose again, and he gave us new life, and that's unchanging. We, we still have purpose. We still have direction. We still have our heavenly standing. And we're offered a chance for our state to move once more to look like our standing. So, with that being said, choose which north you want. Choose which north you're going to follow. Choose where that state is going. Is it going to move with the earth? As the world spins round and round, 
Are you spinning round and round with it? Or are you standing firm on the promise of Jesus Christ and moving in the direction that he has, um, that he has provided? Don't be mistaken, settling for a north that shifts with the way of the world. Follow the true north, the hope of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But many um, don't understand this, and as uh, Joshua said, you've got to choose whom this day you're going to serve. Choose this day who you are to follow. Do not be deceived into thinking that the hard times that we're going to have in life means that you're not on the right path. Hard times build character. Hard times build persistence. It builds experience. It builds hope. Hope in the future that we have it promised to us as Christians. And fight the good fight of faith because it is absolutely worth it. Lean not to your own understanding and realize the path of least resistance is not a path worth living. Our prize is not earthly. It is a heavenly prize which awaits with blessings we've already ascertained. Align your position and condition and live for the upward calling of Jesus Christ as directed in Philippians 3.14. Closing today, I would like to turn to Philippians 1, 19-26. There is one true north. Strive for that point. Philippians 1.19 in the Yellow Bible, that's page 577. About 119 through 26, and we'll close with this. <laughs> For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or whether it be by death. For I am in straight betwixt, sorry, let me go point. Uh, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not. For I am in straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for, for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Life is not about getting through hard times. Life is about, our, uh, is about continuing in the blessed hope that is laid before us, whether in life or death, as the Apostle Paul kind of wrestled with this idea, that we are following uh, what Scripture has to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day, Father. I thank you for everything you do. I thank you for who you are. And I pray that as we go through this life, Father, that we are continuing uh, to follow the true north, not uh, a direction that the world, um, not a direction that with the world is constantly shifting, but that is in your word, that is unchanging, never changing, um, and that we as Christians are able to follow what you have for us to follow, Father. We thank you for the standing and the position that you have placed us in, that we can be positioned in Jesus Christ um, and grow in you and in character in you, Father. I'm so thankful for you, and I'm so thankful for everybody in this uh, church today. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you uh, to the live stream. If y'all have any questions or comments or need further explaining on anything, please uh, drop that below. We'll, we'll discuss it. Thank you so much. You know when... Uh...